AutoCAD 2024 is now available, coming with new features and performance enhancements. We are going to be talking about the kind of hardware that you need for AutoCAD 2024. Is your computer up to the task? Probably. So we recently made some videos on DaVinci Resolve 18 and Twin Motion 2023 and the kind of computers that you would need in order to run those programs smoothly. With the new version of AutoCAD having been released, we're going to be doing the same for that software. As you are probably aware though, AutoCAD isn't especially resource intensive. Our recommended system to start off with would be very basic. We would say even down to an i3, 13100, 16 gigabytes of RAM would even be good enough, and even an entry-level GPU, for example, the NVIDIA GTX 1650. I would go so far as to say, your current computer is probably powerful enough. So that already covers the first system that I would recommend. For basic AutoCAD use, you're not going to be doing huge projects on it, and AutoCAD is the only thing that you use. For the most part, AutoCAD relies solely on CPU frequency, on single thread performance. You would only need more power than this if you are working on especially large drawings, if there's a lot of XREFs, and if you are working with a large number of blocks. And if you're working with 3D rendering, it actually makes use of every single core that your CPU has to offer. If this is what your workflow entails, then you are probably going to want to consider something like i5-13400 or even i7-13700. You're also going to need about 24 to 32 gigabytes of RAM, but the GTX 1650 graphics card is likely still going to be good enough. Now it's important to note, while AutoCAD itself doesn't need much power, it's probably not the only software that forms a part of your workflow. Our job here at Modena Computers is to analyze the client's workflow, including all the software that they use, the kind of projects that they work on, and their budget, and then figure out an ideal solution based on all of that information. So we often find that the same people who are using AutoCAD are also using software like Revit or Inventor, for example. In this case, it is important to consider more RAM in your system, much as I mentioned earlier for more powerful AutoCAD systems, you should probably go with 24 to 32 gigabytes. You would also want to consider maybe a GTX 1660 or an RTX 3050, depending on the kind of projects that you're working on in Revit or Inventor, if those are the programs that you're also going to be using. Apart from the obvious specs like CPU, GPU, and RAM, there are quite a few other considerations when looking at a new workstation for a program like AutoCAD. One of the most important ones would be the support for newer PCIe SSDs. These are much, much faster than older forms of storage. Quite a while ago, we saw that the standard had become two and a half inch SSDs and you would have one two and a half inch SSD and then maybe a large three and a half inch HDD for more storage. Both of those drives are extremely slow. A two and a half inch SSD has a maximum speed of under 600 megabytes per second, and that's in read and write. Newer storage drives make use of the PCIe interface. Some of the latest drives available right now being PCIe 4. That allows you to get over 7,000 megabytes per second read and over 6,000 megabytes per second write. That is over 10 times the speed of what we used to consider to be a fast drive. So having a fast drive, you'll be able to start up AutoCAD quickly and you'll also be able to save and load your projects extremely fast. Apart from this, there's also the support for DDR5 memory. DDR5 is a lot faster than DDR4, which is what a lot of our customers are working with. In fact, we found that some of our AutoCAD customers are actually still using systems with DDR3 memory, which was replaced by DDR4 around 2014, 2015 or so. Moving up to DDR5, you have much higher speeds, it boosts your CPU performance a lot, and there's also the option for greater capacity. For example, with DDR4, you probably had two 8 gigabyte modules, or if you were lucky, you had two 16 gigabyte modules. You could have up to 128, but that wasn't really a common thing. Back in DDR3 days, the largest modules available were actually 8 gigabyte. So we have come a long way in the development of memory, and this makes a big difference no matter what software you're working with. Other new features that are common these days would be things like USB Type-C, which is much faster and more convenient than the older USB Type-A. You'll also see much better connectivity with things like faster Wi-Fi, faster Ethernet, and also higher quality Bluetooth connections, and all of this is built into the system. Our systems generally come with Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5. Another benefit of newer hardware is that it gives you access to Windows 11. You may not really care about what OS you're on, but Windows 11 really does give quite a clean and comfortable experience. Since you're not going to need to spend a lot of money on the CPU and GPU for AutoCAD, you could consider allocating more of your budget towards a nice keyboard, mouse, and monitor. Some really cool options when it comes to peripherals would be things like 3D Connections, CAD Mouse, and Space Mouse. And that'll allow you to work with your 3D model in 3D space quite comfortably. You can rotate, and you can pan, and you can zoom, and you can do all of these 
in very smooth motions. I personally am a big fan of Logitech's MX series. The MX Master 3 seems like it would be a great option for AutoCAD because you can very comfortably and conveniently switch between a clicky scroll wheel and an extremely smooth high speed one. It's also got horizontal scrolling on the thumb and any of the buttons can be mapped to a gesture button. So you can get additional functionality whether you are clicking a button or if you hold it and swipe in one of the directions. And then there's also Logitech Flow. If you are working with multiple devices, you can and click and drag from one directly onto the other. And then there's considerations for the monitor. Unlike other software, things like Twin Motion, for example, working in 4K still doesn't require all that much power. So you don't need to worry, okay, if I'm spending a ton of money on a nice monitor, do I also then need to spend a ton more money on my GPU and CPU? A 4K monitor can make such a big difference for AutoCAD because that higher resolution doesn't just mean sharper images. It really makes the monitor feel like there's more space. You can see really fine levels of detail in things like line work and text, even when you're zoomed quite far out. So to recap, our recommendations here for three different kinds of Autodesk users. If you are just an entry-level AutoCAD user and you're only really going to be using AutoCAD, all you are going to need is something like Intel i3-13100, 16GB of RAM, and a GTX 1650 graphics card. Second kind of user, if you are going to be working with larger drawings, things with a lot of XREFs, with a lot of blocks, or if you are going to be doing rendering in AutoCAD, you should consider a more powerful CPU, so something like i5-13400 or i7-13700. You are going to want 24 to 32 gigabytes of RAM, and you could even stick with the GTX 1650 graphics card. Thirdly, if you are going to be working with other software like Revit and Inventor, for example, you are going to want a more powerful CPU, just like the second example that can be i5-13400 to i7-13700. Once again, 24 to 32 gigabytes of RAM will likely be a good option. One big difference would be you are likely going to want a more powerful GPU. So you would want something like a GTX 1660 or an RTX 3050, for example. So thanks again for watching and let me know in the comments what you think about Autodesk 2024, if there's any new features that you're excited about or if there's anything you wish that they would have added.